Hello everyone. My name is uh, Srinivas Makam and I am one of the Docker captains. In this video, I will talk about a Docker networking tip, uh, specifically the usage of Mac VLAN driver. So typically we have uh, in a bridge driver, which is the default Docker networking driver, we have containers uh, that connect to the bridge, uh, which is in the uh, Docker's uh, you know, default subnet. And then we have the underlay of the physical network, which will be normally in a different subnet. So bridge would take care of doing a natting from the uh, containers IP address to the uh, underlay network. So one of the problem with the uh, bridge driver is that the container subnet would be kind of different from the underlay physical subnet. So in this particular uh, picture, we are illustrated how a Mac VLAN uh, network driver would look like. With the case of a Mac VLAN, uh, there are different kinds of Mac VLAN driver. In the case of Docker, we use the Mac VLAN bridge implementation, which is a very simplified bridge implementation with no Mac learning, NAT, or STP. Uh, so in with the Mac VLAN driver, we can have the containers uh, be in the same physical subnet as the underlay network. So here we see the underlay network in the 192.168 watt one network, and the containers can uh, be in the same network. Uh, with the Mac VLAN driver, we can have single physical interface having multiple Mac and IP addresses. So this is an extension of the uh, uh, the previous case. Here we have uh, two sub interfaces in the underlay physical network, and we have uh, these two containers which are part of this sub interface. That is why they are in the dot one dot x IP address, and these two containers are in the two dot x subnet which is part of this sub interface so we talked about uh, you know what is a mac vlan network driver so why do we need a mac vlan network driver so we want containers to have an ip in the underlay physical network which is managed by the enterprise id typically enterprise id would want all the ip addresses to be managed by them so we want to have explicit control over the ips that the containers get uh, we want to be able to connect containers to a uh, legacy application because some of the legacy application would have a requirement that the source IP is an IP that they can trust and those must have been like some kind of a static IP. Uh, with the overlay network, there is a lot of uh, overhead in terms of the double encapsulation. With Mac VLAN, there is no encapsulation involved. Uh, and there are a lot of applications which want to preserve the source IP of the container. For example, in the bridge driver, we do a NAT and we can have a we have a common source IP for multiple containers. With uh, Mac VLAN, the source IP of the containers get preserved. So these are some of the advantages and the needs of why we would need a Mac VLAN network driver. Uh, so to illustrate the Mac VLAN network driver, I am going to take two use cases. So before I talk about the use cases, I'll briefly describe the environment that I have. So I'm running VirtualBox in the Windows environment. So these uh, two are uh, a boot to Docker, uh, Docker machine images, uh, which are part of the Swarm network. And uh, then I have one more host, which is running uh, default Ubuntu image. I'm going to kind of use this as a host where I can run uh, legacy applications. Uh, so one thing I kind of wanted to show was to run the Mac VLAN driver, uh, it is necessary to uh, enable promiscuous mode on the host network that we are going to use. This is because the same interface has multiple addresses. So it is necessary to use a promiscuous mode. Uh, so the way you can uh, turn this on uh, is by using the host only adapter and use the promiscuous mode allow all. So this is my first use case. So here I have two hosts, uh, the one that we saw earlier, the host one uh, I'm running a container and the host two, I have a MySQL database. Uh, so I just want to illustrate some legacy application that uh, this container is going to connect. MySQL is not a legacy application. Uh, I'm just going to illustrate, you know, this container connecting to a MySQL database. Uh, so here, this is the underlay network and they are part of the, uh, this host is part of the 1900 and this is part of the 99102 network. So what we will do is, create the container in this particular uh, subnet and then we will connect it 
to the MySQL database. We'll, we'll run the MySQL directly on this particular underlay uh, IP and we will connect these two. Okay, so, uh, so here first we can see uh, uh, the two nodes swarm network. And so here you can see the swarm uh, one and two. And uh, so this is going to be my uh, legacy network. So first let me show uh, the MySQL that is uh, running here. So, so this is my uh, interface on which I'm running the MySQL server. So we can look at the uh, MySQL configuration file. The only thing I have done is uh, running the MySQL uh, rather than on the local host. I am running this on this uh, specific IP address. So if I look at the uh, Docker network output, so uh, basically at this point, uh, I don't have any Mac VLAN network. So first let's create the Mac VLAN network. So I have this my cheat sheet where I'm going to copy paste some things. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a network with a Mac VLAN driver with a specific subnet, which is the same as my underlay subnet. And I want my IP addresses to start from 192, uh, you know, number. And I want this is my gateway and the Mac VLAN mode I'm using is a bridge. So now that the network is created, so let's just make sure that our network gets listed. So this is the Mac VLAN network that we, that we created. The next is uh, we will uh, run a container in this Mac VLAN network. So I start uh, a Docker run with a uh, with a network of the Mac VLAN test, and uh, this is my container. So this is uh, a container where uh, I've installed a bunch of tools. Uh, I use it for many of the testing purposes. Here I've also installed the MySQL client. Uh, now if I look at IF config here. So this is uh, getting an address in the dot ninety nine network one ninety two. So now let's try to access the MySQL uh, server, which is uh, not running as a container. Um, so let's try this. So this is how I'm going to the client MySQL client. This is a user that I have created, user and a password that I have created, and this is the IP address we saw uh, where the MySQL is running. Okay, so now we can see that the MySQL, I'm able to access this non-containerized legacy application from my container in the same underlay physical network. So the second use case we're going to talk about uh, is a completely containerized use case. So here we have two hosts which are part of the, uh, the swarm. Uh, I have a vote service uh, which has two replicas and I have a client service which has one replica which is going to access the vote service. Uh, by the way, this particular use case needs uh, Docker 17.06. Uh, prior to 17.06, uh, we could not run a node local network. We cannot actually create a swarm service on a node local network. Uh, so here Mac VLAN is a node local network uh, and we could not have created swarm service. But with 17.06, we could create a swarm service on a node local network like a Mac VLAN. Uh, so what it means is I can create services uh, now. Previously I could just do docker run containers. So now I can create even services. Uh, so basically uh, there are uh, you know uh, two, step, uh, two steps here. First is we do a docker network create. Um, basically we will create you know one uh, Mac VLAN uh, network for this particular host. And here I have used uh, dot, uh, 99.64 address range. And I've created one more Mac VLAN network for this particular host. And then in the swarm master, we create uh, this Mac VLAN swarm network. And here we say config from uh, this Mac VLAN name that we created here. And once we created this, the Mac VLAN uh, network is becomes a swarm wide scope. And we can create the client and the, uh, you know, the vote service. So those are the, you know, the two services that I've created. Now let's try to show that in action. So first, let's create the config only network on the host one. Okay. 
and the next next we can create the config only network on the host two. So we see the Docker network. Less. So this is a config only network on host two. On host one, we have the similar thing. Okay, this one. Now let's create the uh, swarms uh, swarm swarm scope Mac VLAN network on this. So swarm one is my uh, master. So this is where I need to create. So here in the swarm master, we can create. You can see two networks. So, so this is uh, the config only network, and this is a swarm swarm scope network. So now let's create the two services. So the client service I am creating with replicas one, and then I am creating a root service with uh, replicas two, and both of the client and the root service we are creating in the Mac VLAN swarm network. Let's wait for the two services to get deployed. You know, let's check the services. So we can see the client service as well as the root service is deployed. So let's check. Where these services got deployed? So the client service is deployed on Swarm One, and similarly you can check for the root service. So one replica is deployed on Swarm One, and the other replica is deployed on Swarm Two. So let's check uh, the containers. So here we can see the client container and one of the replica of the root running in the node one. So let's access. Uh, let's you know accept into the client container, and we'll try to access the uh, root container. And actually, note the container ID here. So this there are two replicas. So this should get load balanced. As we can see that uh, this uh, the the container ID changes. So that means that we're able to access the root container from the client uh, using the uh, Mac VLAN. Network driver across the host with the swarm service. Uh, I hope this video gave you a good idea of the uh, uh, Mac VLAN uh, driver usage. I picked this particular use case uh, because I found this was one of the most commonly quest asked questions, uh, both in the Docker forum as well as in the Stack Overflow forums. If you like this video, please provide me feedback. Uh, I plan to do more Docker networking videos based on the feedback I receive. Uh, thanks for watching.